The World Cup may be over, but the football continues in New South Wales with the IGA National Premier League New South Wales Men's 1. This is round 18, so let's go to your commentator, Mitch Grimer. Plenty of mouth-watering fixtures in round 18 of the IGA NPL New South Wales Men's 1, headlined by our match of the round clash between Rockdale and RPL Leichhardt Tigers. Competition frontrunners Blacktown City and Blacktown Spartans will be playing a game of who blinks first as they meet Sydney Olympic and South Coast Wolves respectively, while Sutherland Sharks play host to Waratah Cup runners-up Manly United. Elsewhere, Marconi welcome Bonnie Rick White Eagles to Marconi Stadium and Sydney United 58 look to snap their winless run against bottom place St George. That's all exclusive to Football New South Wales TV and this is the IGA National Premier League's New South Wales Men's 1. Marconi Stadium played host to a pulsating encounter between Premiership contenders Bonnyrigg and finals hopefuls Marconi. The small but vocal crowd were first lifted from their seats after 17 minutes when Adam Jenner lofted across for Robbie Yunus, whose header forced a nice diving save from Stallions goalkeeper James Chronopoulos. Bonnyrigg were gifted an opportunity to open the scoring shortly before the break when Tomislav Mij failed to clear his lines and brought down David Frankovic in the box to hand White Eagles a penalty. Eunice stepped up to the spot and opted for a pile driver straight down the middle, which was brilliantly saved by Kronopoulos, who had committed himself to the left. Despite Bonnerig's dominance in front of goal, Marconi would have felt unfortunate not to head into the break 1-0 up. Jared Lum's flick-on found Shu Sasaki on the edge of the box, and the Japanese midfielder struck the crossbar with his deft chip. It was Stallions who eventually found the breakthrough in the 53rd minute. Jared Lum's free kick beating Tristan Prendergast, despite the goalkeeper getting both hands to the shot. But it didn't take long at all for Bonnyrigg to restore parity. Robbie Eunice atoning for his earlier penalty miss with a beautifully struck volley, which left Kronopoulos clutching the air. And Eunice, as he has so often done for the White Eagles, proved the hero deep into injury time when he stole all three points with a stunning goal. Eunice turned from 25 metres out and unleashed a looping shot goalwards. He caught Kronopoulos off guard with a matter of seconds remaining of the match. It was truly a goal out of nothing from the reliable Eunice, who bagged his 14th goal of the season. 2-1 it finished as Bonnerick celebrated a rousing victory to remain within touching distance of leaders Blacktown City. Over to Blacktown Football Park now where Blacktown Spartans faced a resurgent South Coast Wolves outfit unbeaten in their last five matches. The hosts didn't have to wait long to get the upper hand with Luka Dukic scoring in just the second minute to make things 1-0. And the scoreline was doubled 18 minutes in when David Gulo was released on the right and needed no invitation to shoot firing his effort low and hard past the helpless Thomas Hamilton. Spartans should have headed into the break 3-0 up when Jack Keating fouled Corey Bigso in the area. Phil Macris was handed duties from the spot but was denied by a fine save from Hamilton. Wolves made the most of their lifeline early in the second half. Substitute Peter Simonoski smashing home his shot thanks to some brilliant close control to make things 2-1. And the home crowd was stunned six minutes later when Wolves bagged the equaliser. Simonoski delivered a pinpoint cross for Jordan Murray, who sent a rocketing header past Carlos Salidares. That set up a grandstand finish and Spartans knew they had to lift another gear if they were to keep Wolves at bay. 
Their lead was restored with 17 minutes remaining in fortuitous circumstances, as Michael Robinson's attempted clearance from Connor Evans' cross skewed into his own net. But Robinson most certainly made amends right at the death when he found himself in open space at the top of the box and slammed his effort home to cap off a six goal thriller. So 3-3 in the end as the spirited Wolves kept their momentum flowing while Spartans' premiership hopes took a beating. Over to Seymour Shaw Park now where Sutherland looked to get back on track against Manly after consecutive defeats. It didn't take long for the Sharks to surge in front with Reese Williams turning in an own goal in the 18th minute to put the hosts ahead. Paddy Nickers offloaded to Nathan Alassie whose powerful cross cannoned into Williams. But Manly bit back just beyond the hour mark when super sub Tom Morrissey levelled the scores just two minutes after entering the pitch. It was a tempting cross that found Morrissey inside the six yard box and he made no mistake, cushioning his header past Nathan Denham. Sharks soon restored their lead when Jack Green brought down Mitchell Farmer. Dylan Mitchell could only tip Paddy Nickers' shot onto the post and the rebound fell kindly for Lucas Sturgeon, who tapped home to a hand shark to 2 1 lead with less than 20 minutes left on the clock. And the result was put beyond doubt when Nathan Alassie found the net in the 83rd as he latched onto a superb through ball and composed himself to make it 3-1. Sutherland were unfortunate not to have for fourth late on when Matthew Gordon buried his effort home, only for Alassie to be pulled back for offside. Nickers had one last chance to seal the match in style during injury time, but was denied what would have been a deserved goal by the strong palms of Dylan Mitchell. So 3-1 had ended to restore some confidence for Sharks heading into the final series, while Manly sit two points from the bottom. Blacktown City travelled to Belmore Sports Ground determined to keep their ladder lead intact, but it wouldn't be easy against the Sydney Olympic team on the cusp of the top five. Blacktown skipper Travis Major fired plenty of warning signs early on and he found the back of the net after 17 minutes, capitalising on some great build-up play from Ryuji Miyazawa and Mitch Malia to slot the ball home and give his side a 1-0 lead. That was doubled in the 25th minute with Miyazawa this time the beneficiary. Major rose up well to head the ball back across goal and Miyazawa made the most of some poor defending to prod home. Olympic were inches away from pulling one back just beyond the hour mark when Harris K. Tatsis' dangerous free kick was cleared out for a corner by Zach Cancross. Olympic pressed well as they searched for a way back into the match and they got the chance when Gaitatsa stepped up to the mark and curled his free kick over plenty of bodies into the far post. Dimitri Hatsimaradis could have had the final say in injury time but close attention from Travellini and Poscaliero meant he couldn't get his shot away as Olympic missed an opportunity to clinch a late point. That was all she wrote as Blacktown City went home 2-1 victors to pick up a three-point buffer at the top of the men's one ladder. 
Sydney United 58 played host to St George in a battle of two sides determined to break free of the strugglers' tag. United went ahead after just a quarter of an hour when Alec Urusevsky skipped inside the box and was cut down by Costa Andrikopoulos. Mirjan Pavlovic stepped up to the mark and slotted home his effort into the left corner. It was only 10 minutes before United troubled the scoreboard again in emphatic fashion. Ante Tomic received a short corner, cut inside and sized up the goal before sending a thunderous shot past Dion Shaw to give his side a 2-0 lead. United came out firing in the second half and had a chance to make it three when Sherlock and Mileski spread the ball wide to Tomic, who had his shot beaten away by Daniel Mitwali. Alec Urusevski was again in the thick of things as time wore on, his brilliant control unfortunately not matched by a good finish. Consolation for Saints in the 92nd minute as Bruno Pavato popped up amid a goal mouth scramble to tap home and send the visitors home with a 2-1 defeat. So some much needed joy for Sydney United 58 who returned to the winner's circle and moved within touching distance of the sides above them at the expense of St George who remain in 12th. Welcome to the match of the round here at Illenden Sports Centre between the Rockdale City Suns and the Apia Leichhardt Tigers. Rockdale City is still trying to break into the top three, whilst Apia Leichhardt are clinging to a mathematical hope of making the top five. Let's go to your match commentator, Mitch Grimer. Plenty on the line for Rockdale. They can establish some breathing space in fifth spot if they get the win here. I think Apia have already looked more convincing than they were in the drubbing against Olympic last weekend. Stephen Kays. Oh, it's a lovely chip over for Daniel Fogarty. Let's it bounce. He hits it, but Arkaba is right on his touch. Snuffs out the chance. He collects it well. It's intercepted by Warren. He's got power. They know each other very well. Tries the one-two, but it's cut out. Not to worry. Comes back to Tigers for Fogarty. His touch is quite heavy there. But Stephen Kays bursting in the far post. It's there, but it's well wide. Should have done better there, Kays. Gives Rockdale the chance to spread it up to the other end. Lovely switch by Marco Jesic. And just as good control, Tufik Alamedine. He brings it down, cuts inside. Plays a neat one too with Ty Purcell. Alamedine tries one, but he can't keep it down. Should have done better there. Quick release from Arkaba. Not long left in this first half now. Scores still locked at 0-0. Tineski picks it up on the left-hand side. Skips past Galimi, but he's in an Apia sandwich and loses it. Fogarty now. Tineski shrugs him off quite easily there. It's blocked by West. Purcell hits it, blocked again. And Marco Jesic now, and again it's blocked. Brilliant save there by Andrew Barzi. Apia used their get-out-of-jail card there. Barzi reefs it up the pitch. It's over to Fogarty now. Well, again, up here have turned over possession cheaply. Rockdale can break on the counter now. It's Paul Reed in the middle. He sends Marco Yesic through. That's a brilliant ball. Yes, it shoots, but it's wide. It was a bit off balance there. We're approaching the hour mark now. Still nothing to separate these two. Ashkenoiga clears it, but Tigers regain possession. It's wide now to Daniel Fogarty. He has a bit of time. Oh, it's a beautiful cross. It finds Brad McDonald, who volleys home. It wasn't pretty, but it's done the trick. McDonald's volley bounces over the head of Arkaba. And Apia have the lead, 1-0. Perfect delivery there from Fogarty. Bit of an awkward height for McDonald, but he's found the breakthrough for the visitors. Yeah. 
Warren releases quickly. Mayora scoots away and drives towards the left. He's fouled by Idris El Hafiani there. Bit of a professional foul. Mark Warren whips it in. It's flicked on by Mayora. Fogarty picks it up. First time cross to Mayora. He shoots. It's blocked. But McDonald smashes the rebound home. Brad McDonald bags his second to put up your 2-0 up. Brilliant awareness from McDonald to react quickly. Squeezed in between two defenders. Gives the Tigers some breathing space. Still time for Rockdale to claw their way back into this one. Savor lofts it over. Flicked on for Marco Yesich who tries one. But he's dragged it wide. Full time at the Linden Sports Centre. And it's Brad McDonald who proves the hero for Apia. His four minute brace enough to get them over the line. It's finished Rockdale nil. Apia Leichhardt Tigers two. Uh, Michael West, Apia captain. Back after a couple of games uh, away. Uh, fair to say that you're the key. <laughs> I wish I could say that, but uh, the boys will kill me. Um, no, it was a good team effort from 1 through to uh, through to 15 today. Everyone really uh, got stuck in and we stuck to the game plan. What was it about today that everything kind of just seemed to click and you know, you've know got a really big three points here? I think um, the game plan was key. Uh, we discussed it a lot and um, everyone knew exactly what they wanted to do and what we needed to do and we wanted to build on a really strong defence and um, I thought the back, fi back five were very good today um, and Steve Kay's in front was fantastic. Um, and, you know, we soaked up a bit of pressure from him and then we, we stung him on the break with some pace. Uh, Rockdale City midfielder Paul Reid, uh, obviously disappointing to to put in a, a poor performance today. Yeah, it certainly was. We um, we talked about, you know, obviously up here, I think they'd lost three in a row and conceded, uh, well, actually, I think they beat Sutherland 5-4, but they'd conceded 15 goals in the last three games. And to come to come here and lose 2-0 at home, it's, it's really disappointing. We, um, you know, we were on a good run of results and we were hoping to go 3 three wins in a, in a row and you know to come up against up here and uh, put in a performance like that it is disappointing we if we'd put away our chances when we had them we the, the game would have been dead and buried and then they obviously got two goals in, in quick succession so it is really disappointing considering where we are pushing you know we were fourth I'm not sure where we're going to be now fifth or sixth so it's yeah it is really disappointing is it a simple case of just missed chances or was the performance just not really there today you know, it's obviously hard to play on a on a surface like this, but um, yeah, if, if we had taken our chances when we had them, we you know we would have put the put the game away. And then you know we we've, we've relied on our defence all season, and we do have have the best defensive record. And you know it's it's un it's unlike us to concede two goals. And you know they they scored two in quick quick succession, as I said before. And you know we we can't keep relying on on our defence to keep a clean sheet. So um, we the thing is we have we have, we don't just have clear uh, you know. Half chances, they're, they're clear cut chances, and you know if, if we put them away when we had, we uh, Arpia would have uh, dropped their heads, and we we might have even gone on to score a few more, but um, it wasn't wasn't meant to be. That's all we've got time for in this week's show. For all information concerning the IGA National Premier League's New South Wales Men's One, including the full table and fixture list, be sure to head to the official website nplnewsouthwales.com.au, and join us next time for our match of the round as Sutherland Sharks host Sydney Olympic. Bye for now.